Live to Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner, who is set to speak to give an update on the fatal shooting of a New Orleans police detective who was visiting Houston last weekend. Let's listen in. Everyone, I want to thank everyone for being here. And this morning, I'm joined with uh, Chief Troy Fenner, Chief Satterwhite, um, various homicide uh, investigators, um, and Harris County District Attorney uh, Kim Ogg, uh, Chief Pena. Um, and I just want to start off by just thanking this entire group and so many, many others uh, for working tirelessly over the last, uh, well, I just want to say four days, but even longer than that, in addressing the crime situation within our city. Uh, this morning, we are announcing the arrest of two individuals in connection with the murder of New Orleans Police Detective Everett Briscoe and critically wounding Dyron Ricolfi, who remains hospitalized in critical, in critical condition. Uh, these suspects are charged with capital murder and attempted capital murder, and Chief Fenner, as well as Kim, uh, Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg will speak more specifically to these charges. Four days ago, uh, we stood here and, and said we would find and arrest the individuals responsible for the shooting that happened on, at the restaurant at Grotto's on Saturday, August 21st, and uh, that is exactly what happened. We said we would find them, and I want to thank all of law enforcement and all of the people in, in the, the community that assisted in helping to, and to find them. I want to thank Chief Fenner and the HPD homicide detectives and other law enforcement officers on the ground. We have worked diligently to locate and arrest these dangerous criminals. I am grateful to members of the community who called in tips, including one to Crime Stoppers Houston, that led to an arrest in this, in this, in this case. I want to thank Houston businessman Tillman Fatida, uh, owner of the restaurant where the shooting happened, for his general, generous financial contribution. I also want to thank ATF, Houston, and Crime Stoppers New Orleans for adding to the reward fund. Let me just say before this press conference um, started, I uh, had a conversation with Mayor Contrell out of New Orleans, and uh, number one, to tell her of what what was unfolding today and that these suspects had been arrested uh, and also let her know uh, that we are continuing to, to pray and offer our support to the people in New Orleans. I am proud of this community and how the city stepped up to do the right thing by calling in to provide detailed information that led to these arrests. This is a heartbreaking time for the victims, families, and in many ways for the entire city of Houston and New Orleans. And I do want to continue to extend my prayers uh, to Officer Briscoe's wife and his family and his friends and the fellow police officers in New Orleans. And then I want to continue to lift up uh, Mr. Ricoffey and his wife and his children, family members and friends. The break in this tragic case won't bring back Detective Everett Briscoe. It won't undo uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Ricoffey is dealing, face, is dealing with at this uh, point in time. But I pray this development provides some amount of relief for the family as they prepare to uh, uh, to lay Mr. Uh, Officer Briscoe to rest in New Orleans Saturday. I have asked Mayor Pro Tem David Martin uh, and his wife to represent the city of Houston at, at that funeral tomorrow. My heart goes out to his wife, his children, extended family, friends, and fellow officers, and to the Ricoffey family. I want them to know that we continue to pray for him and continue to lift them up as well. The city of Houston is sending representatives, and I just simply ask that we continue to do our best as we move forward. The work on this case is far from over, and let me now yield to Chief Fenner to provide additional details. Thank you, thank you Mayor, and thank you everybody for being here. Um, I just want to thank our community, and this is what happens, and this is what we talk about when community and police officers come together. And not only this homicide, but all homicides in our city. I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate and, and, and glad to stand with our D district attorney, our chief fire chief, Sam Pena. Thank you for being here. But I don't want to repeat everything that the mayor said. I want to thank Tillman Fatida, our crime stoppers, both here in Houston and in New Orleans. 
our ATF partners, all of our partners that assisted us. But I also want to thank our team, our homicide team under Commander Deese, Lieutenant McGallan, and all the other investigators. Great work, but we cannot do it alone. But I want to speak shortly to the human element that sometimes things that go on behind the scenes with families who are suffering because of senseless violence. They're people. I'm proud that I'm going to go down and stand with my colleague and my friend. Because I know he's hurting. Superintendent Ferguson and that entire city and both of these families, we're going to be standing. They got a storm approaching and then he has to deal with all this. And we're going to stand with them as, as, as a city, as a department. And I'm proud. It's, when this is over with, we're heading down. But look, let me say a special thanks to, to all of our units out there. Our SWAT team, our crime suppression, our gang units, our patrol officers. When we stood we said that we were going to leave no stones unturned and we were going after these suspects and we did so wednesday afternoon we arrested one suspect anthony richard jenkins his picture is over here a 21 year old male he was arrested on an apartment complex on the southwest side of uh houston uh, also seized in that arrest was a vehicle a nissan ultima which matched the description of the vehicle that le left the homicide scene. Also, Frederick Dwayne Jackson was arrested Thursday, and he was taken into custody by our SWAT team. And before I turn this over to our district attorney, I want to let you know, please continue to pray for both of these families. Ms. Recuffy, Recuffy, I meant to say, and Ms. Briscoe, I spoke to both of them this morning. I spoke to Ms. Ricoffey last night at the hotel. She's hurting, her family is hurting. Pray for her husband. He's still fighting. But more importantly, pray for everybody. Everybody involved, and we got even other victims out here that's lost loved ones to senseless violence in our city and other cities. Communities, everybody stand up. Good police officers. Good people coming together, solving senseless murders. And we're going to make all our cities in this nation, including Houston, safer. So thank you, and I'm going to turn it over to our, our district attorney. So just like on the uh, old TV show, Law & Order, the police can make the investigative uh, effort as they have in this case to solve a city's terrible crime. It does take prosecutors, however, to take that charge to court. And with that, I want to thank our prosecutor, Cameron Callaghan, works under Ruben Perez in our Gangs and Organized Crime Unit. Uh, Cameron worked right alongside Detective uh, Adam Brock, who I want to thank, uh, he and his partner, for all the work that you've put in since this uh, terrible uh, murder and attempted capital murder. And I, uh, I just don't have enough uh, good things to say about the leadership of HPD mayor under my friend Troy Finner. I knew when he was at the scene this weekend that they would find the killers. And with the aid uh, of his investigators and our prosecutors, they have. Um, so thank you to police, to prosecutors for getting these violent criminals off the street before they could hurt someone else. We're sickened by this bold attack, which left one uh, beloved detective dead and another good friend of his still fighting for his life. And our city's shaken uh, at how this could happen uh, on a, a weekend afternoon at a restaurant in the heart of our tourist area and uh, the Galleria community. Our, the facts are brutal and they are heartbreaking. And we're going to seek justice for both victims and their loved ones as our prosecutors work tirelessly first 
to obtain no bond on each of the offenders. <clears throat> it should surprise no one at this point in Harris County, Texas, that both individuals were already out on bond, one on multiple bonds, <sighs> one for aggravated robbery following a different victim home from the Galleria, and another for aggravated assault. Both are charged with capital murder and attempted capital murder. And capital murder is the highest crime there is in Texas and under our law, and a conviction can only end in two ways, death or life without parole. And I want our city to know that death is on the table. A senior committee of prosecutors will be reviewing the evidence gathered by the police in this case and will announce what the results of that are after all the evidence is in and due consideration has been given. Uh, as I keep saying, I am opposed along with the mayor, the police chief, to the repeated release of people on multiple bonds. Uh, there is no doubt that that is in part driving the crime rate that, that all of these members of law enforcement are working so hard to prevent. So in spite of the frustration that everyone feels, I think today is a moment that we should be proud of because you have caught the offenders. There is a third suspect who is a person of interest. No further information will be disclosed about that person at this time. And I just want to thank uh, Chief Finner. He called it right from the beginning. Uh, at least one of these individuals, uh, Jenkins, is a known and documented gang member with YSB, the Young Scott Block gang that has been responsible for so many other crimes uh, in the South Lawn and South uh, West area of our city. And I applaud um, everyone who has been up day and night uh, for doing their job. And I want to thank and advance the prosecutors who will be carrying the ball forward uh, on no bond requests before the magistrates and the judges in the trial courts. And we look forward to receipt of all the evidence, the identification and capture of the third suspect, and moving forward before a Harris County jury. Uh, our juries are comprised of regular people. I think regular people in this county are really, uh, really suffering under the crime wave that we've been seeing. And so thank you to all of our partners who are working so hard to end that crime wave. We'll bring up Lieutenant. Yeah. My name is Ten Lieutenant John McGallan. I'm the lieutenant over the squad that was assigned this case. I'd first like to say that, as with any case that my squad is assigned or anybody in the Homicide Division is assigned, our first priority is to clear the case and to get justice for the victims. In this case, we had some other priorities. One of our priorities was to do a job that my squad could be proud of, that my division could be proud of, and that my department and the citizens of Houston could be proud of. Secondarily was to do a job that Detective Briscoe Mr. Ricolfi, his loved ones and family, his department, and his city, and his citizens could be proud of. And I think that we've accomplished that goal. I'll answer any questions if you have any. Was one of the suspects arrested on Laurel last night? On what? Laurel Street. Was he arrested on Laurel Street? Yeah. No. no. So you had, you had um, the, the Wednesday was at the Fondren apartment, and yesterday was at uh, Southwest, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, at the hospital? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And can you tell us about the fact that, I think, how did you guys develop leads for them? Because they were, one was like, had a warrant out for a couple, for his, uh, uh, he had jumped bail, and the other young man had another couple of ag assaults. And so how did you develop um, uh, leads on them? We conducted research on what we believe to be the MO. We conducted research on the vehicle. We received a Crime Stoppers tip and numerous tips from the community that helped us piece this together and led to uh, these two individuals. We heard, we heard Chip Finner, uh, Chief, tell everybody thank you so much. Thank Crime Stoppers, thank Silver Petita, the community as well as to Dan. 
Has a one hundred thousand dollar been paid out on this? Was there was the tip connected to one hundred thousand dollars? I I can't speak to that. That would be a question for Crime Stoppers at this point in time. I'm not going to because I, I don't know. Which of these um, individuals is believed to have fired the shots, both or just one? That's still under investigation. I'm not going to get into that at this point in time. Is there a third suspect? There is a third person of interest that we're not going to discuss today because he is not charged. The, the result of a robbery. We have no evidence to indicate it was anything other than a robbery gone bad. Is Jackson, you talk, Jackson you talk also about... a documented gang member of the YSP? Pardon me? Is Jackson also a documented gang He's member a gang of the YSP? He's a gang member, but a different gang. Can you tell us what they were doing beforehand? Court records suggest that they were robbing people in the Delaware area. We have them in the area on surveillance video doing robberies and engaging in activities that would be indicative of stalking people to do robberies. We're talking in the high area by State 48, I-PIX, that area along West Timer? We have them at several locations, That, those being one of the, some of the locations. And, and, and is it, would it be accurate to say that what they're, the, how they conducted this robbery is similar to perhaps some of the other crimes they're already charged with relating to uh, some of the cases they're already dealing with? So like I stated before, when you start looking at the MO, there's a striking similarity which led us to these individuals. And what was that MO? Can you describe what they, their attention, what they would tend to do? In my, in my opinion, and the evidence tends to show that they were targeting people for, uh, basically for high-end jewelry. Did you recover the firearms used in the crime? We have not yet. Okay. DA Og, you indicated that there were multiple bonds that That's these that. gentlemen have been out for. How many total bonds or which court are they out of? Thank you. That. Okay, Jenkins was on bond for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The bond was $40,000 when the new offenses were committed. He has a prior, uh, which normally juvenile convictions are not uh, disclosable, but uh, this one is in the public record. He had a four-year determinate sentence in 2017. So he was out on one. Jackson was out on, and I'll have to tell you the court in a minute. Jackson was on bond for aggravated robbery for an incident that occurred uh, in 2020. He's accused of, in that case, of committing an aggravated robbery along with a co-defendant of a complainant who is believed to have been followed home from the Galleria area. Uh, that victim was robbed at gunpoint of items in excess of $40,000 in value, and he's had to have, uh, he's had to post two bonds in this case because he was forfeited once uh, on, uh, in January of 2021, and he forfeited again on August the 11th when he failed to show up for docket uh, as a result of cutting his ankle monitor off. The time he cut it, uh, the monitor, he was out on a $150,000 bond for the aggravated robbery. There is some indication that the desire to obtain bond money uh, could be involved in the case for another individual. You know, I want to say that um, the, the way that bail is being handled right now by bonding companies uh, can and may have uh, uh, compounded the problem by just taking a small percentage and letting those accused who are out pay the balance, it can be considered a motivation for further crime to raise their bond money. Uh, additionally, for other gang members or friends or family who are in jail, uh, sometimes uh, criminals can be motivated to try and rob to raise more money for their bail. So bail is, uh, is the thread that is unraveling uh, community safety right now and it is our desire every person up here starting with the mayor to restore order right now to but the to the city in, in the explain they were not eligible for for no bond right because people tend to some it, just before this happened if they were not eligible or i'm not prepared to tell you right now bail is a judicial responsibility and we presented the evidence in these cases and um all I can well, tell you. Because uh, we listened to one of the, the PC court document uh, cases, I believe, for Jenkins, and, and I believe the prosecutor, uh, the DA, was pro 
at the, at the PC had mentioned that he was not uh, eligible for a no bond situation prior to this charge. I'm not sure. What I can tell you is that these ankle monitors, there's at least 4,000 people, uh, as I understand. You are listening to Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg. We also heard from Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner and Houston Police Chief Troy Finner announcing the arrests of two people in connection to the death of an off-duty New Orleans police officer last weekend who was visiting Houston. You can continue watching this news conference. We are streaming it live for you on click2houston.com. The news at noon starts now.